In the past, many types of research were limited to giving people surveys and observing them in the laboratory. However, these methods had limitations. First, people taking surveys are subject to recall bias, or inaccurate memory recall, due to the passage of time. Second, surveys can ask about overall assessments, or what is typically the case, or how things are as a whole. For example, a survey might ask about one's vacation. A person might say a vacation was good overall. However, traditional studies can't get at variability or change across time. They can't tell us if a person enjoyed the vacation more at the beginning or end, or whether there were multiple high points and low points. We might think of global surveys as providing a blurred snapshot, whereas a person's daily life is more like a movie. The lab, on the other hand, allows for controlled, isolated observations. However, the lab isn't a naturalistic environment. People don't typically live in the lab, except for a few researchers. This creates a problem. People respond differently in different environments and situations. Think of how you might act with your friends versus your grandparents' friends, or at a museum versus a restaurant. So while laboratory studies can provide a more accurate and less blurry view of people's responses in isolated situations, we still don't get a view of their responses across daily life. More and more, over the last 30 years, researchers have turned to the experience sampling method to address the limitations of traditional surveys and laboratory observations. ESM is a way to learn about people in, or close to, real time and in real life situations by repeatedly asking questions as they go about their day. Experience sampling can be done in various ways. However, it most commonly involves having participants answer questions on paper, an older method, or a smartphone, a newer method, multiple times a day over a certain period of time. Using this simple technique, we can get more accurate glimpses into people's lives and how they respond to various situations. ESM can also be applied to healthcare surveys, such as patient-reported outcomes and clinical outcome assessments for better insights into patients' health. Now that you have an idea of why ESM is so useful for research, let's move on to the next video in the series on how to set up an ESM study. If you would like to learn more about how to start an experience sampling study of your own, contact LifeData for more information.